I want to talk about retention. Mm. When you figure out this is a good, talented employee, mm. and we all know it in our gut when we work with someone, right? Mm. Like mm. you don't need to do a, a questionnaire or a science to be like, this guy is good. You know the guy is good. Correct. How do you? How far do you go in retaining them? What do you do for them? <laughs> My experience has been younger employees, the grass is greener on the other side. Older employees know a lot more of what they want. I used to, at least in Langur, my team is much smaller now in distributed energy, but in mm-hmm. Langur, we used to think about forced, unforced attrition. And we used to bucket under 32 and above 32 mm-hmm. because they're very, very, very different numbers. And like, in, obviously you want lower numbers in both, but my our uh, un, like about 32 numbers were close to zero. It was almost like the only attrition was forced attrition. But under that number was really high. And and like the truth is, when people are like still young in their career, a few things are happening. They're hearing stories from others and mm-hmm. getting easily influenced, so they think that there's something better out there. And second sure. is they're building a income ladder, <laughs> and like that jump enables more income. So you like you always jump because. The existing business has built economics around you and for them to give you that kind of a jump is really hard often. So so not to take it personally. Yeah. And 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 be very clear that hey, here are certain skill sets that I cannot retain, so I just need a bench and be ready with a bench. And then there are certain skill sets where you really want them to stay and there you like spend as much time it takes. Mm-hmm. There. Like I have an example in my current business. Somebody had a problem with something that I can't get into, but I was on that problem in minutes and I put some really good people on that problem to make sure that person didn't feel ignored, Mm -hmm. Uh, that that their concern about something was taken extremely seriously because this person is a key person for me and I can't lose them. I will invest very heavily in experienced senior people leaders, Uh, in younger people, obviously you train them, you spend all the energy, but you're not emotional about them. You basically build a bench just in case. Yeah. That's how I think about it. So you just head yourself a bit with that. Because the, like, just the life stage makes it very different. And then it the does. more mature, experienced folks, people who have seen the world, yeah. of usually like if you're a good employer, yeah. they want to stay with you because yeah. like that's all they're looking for. Yeah. And then the joy of doing something bigger than themselves, working with people they enjoy and doing good work, right? Like ultimately that's what they're after. And obviously yeah. getting paid the bare minimum that you need to your, for your life. So. Uh, at least make sure that you cover whatever their basic needs are and you give them something bigger. I would like, it is not hard to retain yeah. senior people if you at least have the right motivation. If you are looking for advice on how to build relations and how to find and retain people, I'll tell you good luck. <laughs> good luck because it is one of the most <laughs> difficult and not everyone has it in him or her mm-hmm. to do. Um, I wouldn't call it lucky. We weren't lucky in doing this. I think we built the right culture in place that the people that joined and we retained, and we'll talk how, they bought into. They saw themselves part of that culture. They resonated with the values that we have, not those that are put on the wall that people read, Mm -hmm. right, only. But it's those values that we live by. Those that are synonymous with mine, uh, I believe, as a founder, you believe in a set of values, be it respect, be it differentiated, as I said, it is actually one of our values, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in being committed, in being um, excellence or believing in excellence as as a key way of doing business and believing in seamlessness. So when you possess them and you exert them and people experience them and feel them and live by them, then uh, this is an area where they see themselves working in. This is a place where, where they can call home for them. We didn't get it right all the time. And we had to take some sometimes painful measures and that's the worst aspect of the business Mm -hmm. letting go but Mm -hmm. i think it is much healthier to let go with those who do not share your values Uh, those do not understand the culture those who do not buy into what you're doing and your vision and those that stuck around 
anyone says that you, you said it and every single client that you have say you have a culture that mm-hmm. very much is synonymous very much in line with with you as a person as we know so those who meet me those who know me those who worked even with me mm-hmm. and see what i've built in terms of the operation they understand how this culture very much looks like 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 me and definitely what brand lounge is all about today empathy is one you need to be empathetic and show vulnerability as well as a business owner as a founder co-founder whatever you're ceo man it doesn't matter the title mm-hmm. is irrelevant yeah you need to also be show vulnerability to your team that yeah you can make mistakes and how you own up to them yeah and i don't mean this in a dubai uae middle eastern or a south asian way because that's predominantly where the employment base comes out of mm-hmm. i think this very sort of yes sir subservient mm. obedient thing of oh if i make a mistake i'll lose my job yeah that culture needs to go away here and i think we have come a long way here in the 16 years or 15 nearly 16 years i've been here i think that's yeah. going away yeah but i still see you know when you employ somebody who's only been here 6 months you can see oh god this is that cycle is going to repeat that they're going to be scared to own up to a mistake or even tell you the mistake until it's way further down the line yeah and i think it's like they should be open and up and, and transparency right be transparent enough to runners and i think owners yeah. need to be a bit more open in their relationship get to know that person yeah you know just simple things like i don't do it often and i haven't done it often enough but yeah. just go and sit with them in your staff canteen or go and grab a chai in the winter on the on the road with them a little casual lunch with them it doesn't ma- yeah. it doesn't have to be fun go and eat what food they relate to it doesn't matter yeah. you're you're kind of getting to know somebody 